Okay, friends, this is day 10 of our Rooted Plan. I got a fancy set today. We were recording another video and I asked my buddy and uh, one of our video guys, Anthony, to leave it set up. So you get a fancier video today. So we are in Isaiah chapter 11 um, today. So there's a portion of this that's really personal for me. I'm going to share that with you. And there's a portion of it that I just think is deeply uh, profound as it speaks to the truth of how we find hope in our lives. And it really sits at the center of and ties together this, this whole plan in a lot of ways. I talked about this passage in Cornerstone this past Sunday, so if you were a part of that in person or online, some of this will be repetitive to you. But I'm also going to look at more of the scripture here than I did this past Sunday. So here's the first verse, and then I'll go back and give some context on this. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Okay, what does that mean? So the image here is really pretty straightforward, but what's the image mean? The image is that there is a cut down tree, there's a stump, but coming up out of that stump is some new greenery. You, you, you've seen this. I remember the most profound way that I've seen this is in a lake, a man-made lake, where there were stumps that were coming up from it because it used to be a, a forest. There in the middle of the lake, um, a stump that's just barely sticking out of the water with new plants growing up out of it, almost like a little little island, right? Or you can think about this like with crepe myrtles. When crepe myrtles are cut down, new growth comes out of them. For a lot of types of plants, if the roots are alive, even though it may look like the tree is dead, there's still life in the roots. So that's the image that's happening here. But what's it talking about? Well, the stump of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. David was the, uh, the king of Israel who is kind of the, the placeholder for when you're talking about the height of Israel. You're talking about King David's uh, reign. He was kind of the prototypical, like, great king for Israel. So they could have said the stump of David, but they go back a generation, like the stump of Jesse. Because Jesse is the one who, who yielded, who gave us David, the great king. You get a few generations out from David. And what's happened is that the nation of Israel, this nation, this people, who were meant to be a blessing to all of, of uh, the world, it's cut down. It's made like a stump. I mean, it looks like it's done for. It looks like there's no coming back from this. But what Isaiah is saying is actually there's still life in the roots. There's a shoot one day that'll come up. There's a branch. There's still life in the roots. And then if you keep reading, I'm going to read a, a little bit further here. It talks about what this shoot, what this branch, what this person will look like. And this language began to be associated with the, the promised Messiah, the coming king. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and, the, um, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Which sounds terrible, but then you remember this is a people who are being um, greatly oppressed by, by wicked people. So the idea that this person will come and lift up the lowly and knock down the oppressors was a, a, a tremendous promise of hope. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. So it describes what this king, this coming Messiah with the shoot from the roots will be like. Well, this becomes deeply personal for me is that there was a season in my life last year, around this time last year, I mentioned this in Cornerstone, where things were just difficult. I just felt like things were kind of chopped down. I, I was at a place where um, I was having a hard time kind of seeing a future um, with hope. I don't mean to be super dark there. I mean, it wasn't probably as bleak as I'm making it sound, but certainly on this particular afternoon, it just it felt like a lot of things were just kind of a stump. And what I did, I sat on the floor of the cornerstone and um, just prayed, God, like bring a shoot out of these roots. 
bring life out of this this place of desolation. You know, this place that it just doesn't feel good. Bring a shoot up out of these roots. And that may be where you are. In this season where it's supposed to be so joy-filled and all these things, you may be at a place where you just feel chopped down. I mean, not in every area of your life, but a part of your life. And you're just praying, bring a shoot out of these roots. And what happens when the shoot comes? Well, this. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. And you picture that and you think, I, who cares? I don't care what happens to these animals. Look, what's this painting a picture of? And the calf and the lion and the fatted calf together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So these, uh, these predators are now becoming, um, uh, they're, they're now, now feasting not on animals, but they're feasting on the, the, the goodness of, uh, of creation. They become vegetarians here because there's no more killing of one another in the animal kingdom. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. What's the image that's being painted here? Well, the image that's being painted here is an image of the world being at peace. But does it mean that when Jesus comes that these exact things are happening? I don't think that's what Isaiah is going after here. What Isaiah is going after is painting a picture of the world being at peace. I know that many of us are at a place right now where we are just praying, God, bring a shoot up out of these roots. Bring a branch just out of this desolation and bring peace into my life. That maybe you, or it may be that this message that you're receiving today is not for you, but for somebody else. Who do you know who's been chopped down? And do they need to know there's still life in your roots? There's still a shoot that they can come up from those roots. There's still hope to be found. You can find peace. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for all the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This points us ahead to where we're going in the plan, tying it to the plan as a whole. God is moving creation towards restoration, towards redemption towards healing and towards hope. And what he's saying is in this moment of deep, deep darkness, right in the middle of the story, I mean, if you're reading through this physically, I mean, this is where the staple is. Right in the middle of this story, when things look bad, you need to know, Isaiah is saying with, with just the, the, the spirit inspiring him, even when it feels like there is no hope, a shoot can come up out of those roots. And of course, we'll be talking about how it's Jesus who fulfills this prophecy. So keep with your reading. We're uh, about halfway through, and I just pray that this reading plan will continue to be a blessing to you as it is a blessing to me right now. God bless you, friends, and I'll see you next time.